Okay, so hi everybody. This is um the podcast. Um, I'm your host Clarice, and I have my co-host here, Molly Champlin. Hello, hello. And today we have our first guest, Oscar Pearson. Oscar Pearson is recognized for his paintings, which have been described by others as inquisitive, resilient, playful, and celebratory, with a distinct West Coast vibe. His works often utilize pattern, geometry, and symmetry as compositional tools. Pearson is a California-based interdisciplinary artist working in the mediums of painting, mixed media, and murals. After three formative years working as an assistant to an established ceramicist, he decided to elevate his career as an artist, earning his Bachelor of Fine Arts in Drawing and Painting from South California State University, Long Beach. He co-founded and co-managed the Place on PCH, an arts coalition that offers that offers an international artist residency program in Oceano, California. Currently, Oscar is a full-time studio artist and muralist. So welcome, Oscar. Thank you, Clarice. Thank you, Molly. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be here with you. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for inviting me. Um, of course, we're so excited to have this conversation with you. Me too. Our first question is what brought you to painting? What brought me to painting? Um, uh, nail polish. <laughs> Seriously? Wow. I would how say- old? Wait, how old okay, were you? So when you I'll first... explain. I'll explain <laughs> this. I'll explain. Yeah, please. Uh, so I'm just thinking of like my first memories of like, because I, what I would say is what brought me to painting is like an obsession with like the visual world, you know, and just like optics and perception. But I think one of the earliest memories I have where that started, I remember this, I have this vivid memory of looking at my older sister's nail polish collection. And it was just all laid out. She had this set that was like probably 30 nail polish colors. And they were all like ordered, you know, in like this beautiful kind of harmony. And they like some of them were iridescent and and they were all in these lustery glass containers. And I just remember looking at them and just just sitting and staring at them, just marveling at them. And that was like just an early thing that I remember thinking like, I don't know, something something about. And that they were just like little potions almost like you could. The other thing is like, <clears throat> there was this one scene in the film Nightmare Before Christmas <clears throat> where uh, the Jack Skellington guys like putting together all this like Christmas concoction and like the stop motion animation is just really like tactile and interesting. So it's kind of like an alchemy moment in the movie. I think that that too is like that was that's another first thought that kind of reminds me of like painting it is like this kind of mad chemist thing that I was really into as a kid. And so before you even had that that magical experience of like mixing colors, you like recognize those objects as somehow like ma magic. Yeah, so I don't think. That yeah exactly so like I didn't know then that it would be painting but yeah. but I now looking back at those it's like it's like that awe and fascination with like the visual that that I think just still I, I still like love to do it all day you know yeah did you get to paint your nails when you were when you were a kid I was thinking about it and like I don't really remember. I'm sure I did. I, I my yeah. sister probably had me like, you know, I know I like dressed up in a dress and like, you know, yeah. did like all kinds of stuff because she was, we were close. Um, but I don't remember like a lot of times painting my nails. Definitely painting my toenails sometimes. I kind of like painting my toenails. Fun. Or having them painted. I'm not very good at doing it myself. That's funny. um so yeah that's I'm just thinking like those memories that uh I, I don't know um but then as far as like what was it when did I know I was a painter yeah, like, I, and then how did the academic sort of because you studied painting like, yeah how did that um choice come about 
so yeah and there there's more to it so that was like the the seeds of like visual interest but um i always i used to draw with my dad a lot too because he is he's always been into drawing and sculpting and like when i was a kid he there was a lot there was a few years where he was uh taking care of me at home when i was real young and we would like draw and like play video games and like you know smoke weed no I'm, i i wouldn't but yeah <laughs> but uh he would but yeah and so that was like we would all, so like drawing drawing doodling um and then my both my grandmothers uh painted just for just on their own just out of their own personal interest and love for it and so um my mom's mom had paintings in the house that she had made because we when my mom and dad moved up to the central coast we moved into my mom's my grandmother's house and then took care of my grandmother and so uh i grew up with her paintings in the house and i grew up with um a big uh my dad had this big hr giger print that was in their room and it tripped me out really like as a kid and so like oh, i'm just thinking those those things i think and just knowing arts around and like it supported my family was supportive of, of art making and creative stuff my dad did like pottery and stuff so that's i'm awesome. not yeah, I'm not familiar with H.R. Giger. Can you describe the the print? Okay, so yeah, the I'll try. It's this print. So Giger like was an airbrush mostly artist. Like oh, kind of cool. a lot of it was monochromatic, but it was this really technically skilled airbrush. So Giger designed the some of the set, and he designed the alien in the movie Alien. Okay, cool. And so he designed like some of those landscapes and 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 some and the actual alien itself. And um he was this really technical airbrush artist, German guy. And he there was this print, there was this really nice large print in my parents' bedroom, and it was like this this human figure that was like attached to this uh robot kind of cyborg figure, and they had like tubes like attached from their mouth. And it like looked like there was this, like it was almost like a paraplegic like fleshy cyborg robot cyberpunk thing. Yeah. Cool. And it was like it was just really like it just hit like as a child it was like intense. I was like this is like scary <laughs> and like kind of sexy and kind of like a lot of things. Um, so yeah, check out giger for oh. sure yeah yeah i think i think i might be familiar i've seen that movie jodorowsky's dune where he like gathers all these uh jodorowsky the filmmaker ga gathers all these like concept artists and like artists to like work on yeah I think they didn't get made. so they never was, made yeah. that right they never no made they it. never made it no okay but yeah. i was thinking about watching that too so that's yeah, just kind of about like about the almost making of it or yeah, it's mainly about Jodorowsky's, like, you know, ability to get all these people on board and, like, really sell this vision. So it's kind of like a, a, a yeah. That would have been it's so interesting crazy. Story. Definitely watch it. But yeah. that, that, like, um, kind of, like, borderline liminal sort of, like, what you were describing about that print seems like something that you're going for in some of your, your paintings. Like, yeah and I think some of like the way it was like more like these two things were like kind of like attached and like made something new like mm -hmm. or I don't know like something about like the I did it does remind me of some things I'm interested in, where it was seemed like they were kind of forced together and like um kind of interlocked in a way that I that I think about uh things cool yeah um yeah yeah and then just and then just uh drawing throughout you know as a kid and then taking classes in high school community college then at community college I was kind of like got a lot of encouragement and thought okay you know I guess you know kept stayed interested in it mm -hmm. and then uh went to Long Beach and uh, I think in community college was when I was like yeah this is what I want to do yeah 
what made you make the shift between like ceramics to painting um I remember that I was doing a lot of ceramics at community college and I really liked it I really liked the process but I felt like then I just got I was making a lot of pots you know and pottery and and I liked that a lot but then I wanted to I kind of started making sculpture out of ceramics and I just felt like I just wanted to make lots of different stuff and like and I felt like painting was more of like an avenue to like explore more like fun kind of like weird things not I mean it's obviously not true like I see a lot of ceramics that are just amazingly like like what I mean you can do anything you know with it pretty much but at that time in my mind I was like thinking it was limiting or something and so I wanted to I wanted to approach painting where I guess I think I just wanted to move away from like the craft and more towards like uh, meanings and interpretation and th that kind of thing that that that's involved in mm -hmm. and and I could have done that in ceramics like I remember I I remember when I was kind of leaning away from the craft I made like this ceramic toilet and I planted a cactus in it and uh, and I think that was like one of the last things where I was like you know what? I think I need to do something different because because uh, I don't know it just I felt limited Right. It seems like craft um, is a big part of your practice still, though. Um, and yeah. I'm wondering, would you see like the mural or the public art as having more of a craft um, app with like? It's yeah, it's it? important. Yeah, yeah, it's important with the murals, I think, because there's like a responsibility for them to last a little, you know, a while. And I think uh, also like from just a practical perspective, like a lot of if they're like paid things the the institution or the client like the kind of contractually makes you have it be well made you know like they don't want it if they're paying for it they don't want it to like dissolve in a year you know so um but also um yeah i think craft craft is important to me I'm still working on it like I feel like I'm still like trying to be better about craft I see some paintings and I'm like oh my god mine are so sloppy <laughs> <laughs> but but uh but I but yeah I think yeah maybe that comes from um just a little bit from the ceramics or it also comes from uh the assistantship I had with uh Darcy Vadiali, the ceramic artist. He was really into craft and really uh kind of uh emphasized that. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty young when I was like I was really developing and so that was like in my head, like craft. Mm -hmm. and... I think I mean there's an interesting conversation about like whether or not those craft and art are different. And then mm -hmm. there's also like uh, craft as in like um, is sometimes applied to like objects that are maybe more like everyday everyday or useful objects. Yeah. And like craftsmanship of a of a painting. Right. Um, yeah, it is. Um, it is kind of interesting. Like, where do you draw the line? Um, De 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 depending on your definition of art depending on your definition of um craft um yeah i guess art doesn't need to have high craftsmanship but craft uh <laughs> i don't know craft <laughs> art, art doesn't need to yeah i mean sometimes art is about speed like speed or yeah or but, like sloppy yeah. words or something but intent it's got to be intentional right like intent yeah i guess that's the yeah. interesting part like intent yeah is in both yeah 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 it's definitely in both. well um, what, what was your oh. first mural project Since my first mural project um well, there's like a first, first, very first, or then there's like the first that I 
would like show people. The first one I did was in high school. And then that one doesn't exist anymore. I think they tore the building down. And then the first one that I feel like is my new first one was the one I did at, um, I did it in Oceano on Highway 1. There's this small little hole in the wall Mexican, um, Mexican restaurant. And I painted a mural along the back wall of their building. And it's like eight feet by 32 feet. And it, it shows like a little bit about like a little nod to like Spanish culture with two dancers. And it shows some reference to this area, the Oceano Dunes. There's these sand dunes nearby and they're really iconic and beautiful. And, um, and then in, in, there's some indigenous like kind of folk art imagery of like uh, Mexican and Mexican indigenous to kind of balance the the Spanish uh, Spanish imagery and then an aga uh, like an agave plant and uh, and these big floating tortillas. So it was just this kind of mural for the area and for <clears throat> the restaurant itself. And it was a there was a grant that one of the like the little associations in the city had. And they just came to the art space I was at at the time, the place, and they were kind of frantically like, "We have this grant, and we don't want it to waste to waste away." It was like two thousand dollars, and so you know, can you do something? <laughs> and so it was just really random, and and that kind of got me started on doing the murals, um, and and that kind of got a little start a little momentum yeah I love um that one's great and I'm glad that I got to visit this summer and see those like floating tortillas that are kind <laughs> of almost like spaceships or something yeah but that, was the, that was the like main uh uh concept right the homemade tortillas and the... yeah yeah so they make these really delicious homemade tortillas and so I knew right away they've been there for quite a while and so like everybody locally knows knows them knows them for those tortillas and so I just wanted to like really like make that <laughs> first first order of uh, things. yeah yeah has the public art you've done led to any interesting or surprising encounters um yeah yeah definitely um so many I I love I think the cool thing about one of the really fun things that I didn't anticipate about public art it's just like being outdoors in a public space day in, day out for a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. You just start to notice like the people and you see the same people coming in and out, you know, like the same people go through the same areas, like everybody has their routines. And so you just start to notice these like specific demographics in different areas and, um, I'm trying to think of somebody in particular that I encountered. Well, when I did a mural in Santa Maria, California, um, it was funded through the Santa Barbara Arts Fund and they they support arts in Santa Barbara County. And with that one, I did a mentorship uh, program with the with students in Santa Maria. And so that was really cool because I got to work with young people who are interested in art and that was just exciting um I got to like show them how to mix some colors and then paint on the wall and just kind of like allow them to paint on the wall <laughs> like that was like a big I feel like they were really hesitant um which was which was cool it was cool because I think like for kids they're hesitant already just to like paint sometimes and so to paint on a wall is like oh this is permanent and this is in the public eye. And so I think it was cool to kind of break down those uh, barriers for them. And kind of, that was that was fun. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Have you have you worked with kids before? Have you ever done like done teaching? Um that was kind of like one of the only things I've done like formally with kids um but it was really cool I'd, I'd like to do 
more mm-hmm. stuff with kids for sure because it's just like I don't know it just gives you like a positive <laughs> feeling <laughs> to like yeah. just see I don't know just to see like kids change so quickly like I love watching that where like one hour they're like really shy and don't want to like touch anything and then like the next hour they're like give me more (laughs) color and like you know like Mm -hmm. I like that evolution and like seeing how fast they take to things and it's just like uplifting it's nice it's always fun but yeah yeah, that would be cool um how about you like you've 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 taught a little bit at the college but have you taught with young kids um, I have. I was briefly in elementary school. Uh, I worked with elementary schoolers and those. Oh, really? Um, I do like college students. Yeah. Um, because they come in with they're just like personalities develop yeah. like yeah. their own sort of motivation, and you're more like I feel more like a coach in right. my teaching positions. Um, but there is something about kids, like really young kids, where they don't have uh they don't have the built up like sense of like structure or what's right or what's wrong or like too many like preconceptions about what can be art so as long as they have like material and license and space to do it they yeah really inventive stuff definitely yeah I um I assisted someone to do a mural but it's like a paint by numbers thing and like we kind of just mm-hmm. let everybody like do the thing uh-huh. and little kids like doing murals it's just great to watch them they're so free and like they just don't really yeah. care, like getting things in the lines so yeah I know it's also fun just like seeing them all like different um like all doing things differently like some are really sloppy some are like super careful and like I don't know it's just interesting to see so much diversity like at a young age like it's yeah interesting yeah I mean they do have they have personality for sure yeah yeah they don't no no totally but yeah I don't know for some reason it's just more flexible maybe how important is location to your work now or in your development as an artist and under that, um, how does your connection to the landscape inform your work? Um, I'd say location's really important. Um, I think it just historically is like artists, it's almost like how we look at painters sometimes is like where they were, you know, when they were painting. It just has such a dramatic effect, I think, on whether they can like I don't think you can help it like where you are is gonna just change change your work I think because because of like the muse idea you know it's like because of the idea that it doesn't all just come from you you know it's like it's coming in from all angles you know and so like whatever you're around is just informing your work and so I think it's important on that level of just um paying attention um and then as far as landscape um I landscape I just think it's really really important I mean I don't know I think land like I'm just thinking of like land and like I think it's like I love um I, I don't know I think what am I trying to say it's I mean how would you compare oh can I yeah please um how would you compare like or when you approach the landscape of say Long Beach versus the landscape of Oceano like what um are they different or like do you see them both as as a type of landscape mm. um yeah and is the work that you make in those locations different yeah yeah I think I think it is um I think uh I think when I'm in the city like when I'm in Long Beach it's there's a lot more I think it's harder I mean it's like harder to see the landscape it's like there's so much going on 
Um, but I think ev all the chaos becomes part of the landscape, you know, I think, I think, or thinking about the landscape as like the environment, you know, instead of just the land. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's how I think about it in Long Beach, like, and whereas in a more rural place or up here in, you know, Shiano or on the Central Coast, I would think I look at it just because it is more about nature and about, I see more nature, I see more, I'm paying attention to, well, I've always just thought about how out of balance like we are and, and just dependence, you know, like that the land just provides everything, you know? And so um, that's like, when I approach murals in particular, that's when I feel like, I don't know, I've always felt like I have to say something about the land or the context and something that kind of uh, serves the community and the, um, and the place. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I haven't really applied that as much in like my studio paintings, but, but maybe I will. Um, yeah. Are your studio, your studio paintings are more figurative, right? Or you I have, think, you have figures yeah. in the landscape. Yeah. They're together. It's like, I, yeah. I think, and is that, yeah. That yeah, relationship it, between people and their environment is that right. Important? It's yeah. that's totally what it's about. Like, yeah, I, or that's a big part. I'm always thinking about like people and their relationship trying to trying to cultivate like like uh kind of like that indigenous mm -hmm. philosophy of like having a relationship with everything i think about that idea a lot um i don't live that idea but i but i strive or i aspire to have more of that kind of balance of like having a relationship with um with everything with the land with um um and then in the paint I mean painting is all about relationships it's like that I feel like it's this you know it's just that's everything it's like as Our soon as you, relationships yeah relationships. as soon as you put something on the page it's like okay now another thing and then now they're in relationship and yeah. and it's it gets really complicated and it gets entertaining and yeah. So, yeah, I think the figure and the landscape have always liked that that kind of relation. Mm -hmm. I usually start, I don't know, sometimes, uh, yeah, and then, and then pattern has been kind of a way recently to, like, kind of uh, uh, intersect them, intersect mm -hmm. the landscape and the figure. Mm -hmm. Patterns that move through both. And then that, yeah, and that kind of, they move yeah. through both and they actually interact with both. So rather than being like a, like a screen or like a filter, it's like yeah. actually affecting the figure and the land. Yeah. Did that develop, develop in the work that you did in Brazil? You did a residency in Brazil, right? And yeah I kind of did like a DIY study abroad <laughs> yeah uh, during my last semester at Cal State Long Beach um it definitely took off like or it it, it grew there I mm -hmm. think the seeds of it had already kind of started but it definitely grew there I think like with the help of Fran Siegel because she kind of was pushing me to do like different ways of drawing and stuff and so I think that helped kind of loosen up some of the ways I would uh kind of see things and like apply things yeah it's funny how like just ways of working you know, like loosen up like oh I, I don't have to do that I can just mm -hmm. see through this figure or something like that mm -hmm. um, what does that bring to the work for you, having like the the visual integration of? Um, I think it brings like I think of it sometimes like rhyming or something, like uh, 
there's like, oh, this shape in the figure rhymes with this shape in the landscape, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's like kind of what I, I'm like looking for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if it's because I listened to a lot of rap when I was a kid or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of like or like or kind of like a pun or like you know but visual instead of with words mm -hmm. um sometimes I think of it like that and I don't really know why I do it I just <laughs> just sometimes I get annoyed that I do it and I'm like why can't I just I wish I would just paint you know huh. sometimes I'm like I just want to and I can I can just go paint if I could always take a break and just paint something regular yeah. No, I think that's what makes that's what makes painting interesting is you get to see someone's like very specific point of view that's almost like like it just like a neurological level or something. Yeah, yeah like some kind of uh disorder. No. <laughs> I don't, I probably not. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um I wanna um ask about the figure in your work um in and I think when you were talking about landscape it kind of reminded me there's this idea in old landscape painting of like the um object like the land is this like beautiful thing for man's conquest or yeah, <laughs> like yeah. exploration mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious like the 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 same perspective could be like put on the female nude so I'm wondering yeah. like, um I don't know if you don't, you don't have to connect that to landscape painting, but like, what's your stance towards like the, the object, objectification of the, the subject matter in the, the painting? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think about that. Uh, I definitely think about it. Um, and I think that, well, for one, I think that we're in like, a better place I feel like like in so many like we I mean I think the cool thing about like like the gaze for example or that kind of thing is like it's so like the cool thing about now in the art world is that there's so much you see like you know the gay gaze you see the female gaze you see and I think like that's a positive way of like it's nice that it's so cool that that's all going on now like and I think that when I when I incorporate the female nude or the female next to nude or something um sometimes I kind of play with the idea like um of the gaze like one of the first times I was kind of playing around with it was and I guess so I guess there's levels of that like the gaze and painting like me painting is or there's like the personal level like it's never gonna go away I'm oh like that's nature and that's like it's part of like courtship it's part of like every like I mean sexual you know culture is and so there's that part and then there's the part where it's like in these like major uh major consumed things like when it was you know like when it started being uh that that phrase started uh you know it's like okay films that are like portraying people in a in a certain uh what it what was it like a um a uh, passive female you know or something like that and uh, perpetuating ideas or like um, uh, or making like shame a thing like making body shame I think that stuff shit terrible you know like mm -hmm. I don't and and I think that's like a next level gaze where like you're applying it to like popular media mm -hmm. not to say that like I don't have responsibility because mine are just paintings but there's like a next level responsibility when it's like being disseminated into like everybody's tv across the united states you know um like people that's kind of like 
forced into people's minds and it can have effects you know i don't know how to measure those effects but but it definitely can um i don't know i think like what i was gonna say is i play with the kind of idea of the gaze sometimes like i remember i painted this one time i painted this beach scene and there was like a lady taking a picture of another lady's butt and uh, <laughs> and i don't know like I was, I was just thinking about it, you know, I was thinking about like, and I, and I don't know what the answer to it all is, you know, it's like, I definitely don't see my theme, like figures as being kind of subject to like that kind of classic gaze thing, because, well, for one, they're not passive and they're not like in some specific role that females are supposed to be in, like mm -hmm. by some like I'm like I'm trying to force some kind of they're usually active like uh it's like from a, a perspective of celebration uh I think celebration is good also just like reflection of like what I see yeah and, like, and I made maybe that is perpetuation of like the gaze if you're reflecting what society already like does then I guess that is kind of like you're perpetuating but it's like <laughs> It's kind of like that's what artists do in a sense, you know. Um, and then, yeah, it's it's interesting. I've always been like a, you know, it's like a spectator. I mean, as a visual artist, it's like that's what we do a lot of the times. It's like we stand back and like look at things and look at people, and and uh, so so I think it's something that I've like I wrestled with like early on because I remember when like somebody in like community college was like uh like oh why do you always put like sexy women in your paintings or something and I didn't even know what to say because I was so young and I just like uh <laughs> you know and then I remember my teacher was like yeah that's you know you're gonna have to like think about that you know and uh, and yeah it was just funny because now looking back it's like I didn't really know like what she was trying to like get at you know but but obviously now I've thought about it like a lot more and when I yeah I don't know yeah um I like thinking about it in the context of you looking at your sister's nail polish and it being that kind of that mood totally yeah I Except, mean yeah enamored um uh beauty I think everybody's beautiful I mean my favorite thing is like going to model sessions and drawing like every person like ever you know I just love it I love and it's funny because yeah it's a tricky thing because like objectifying is kind of like <laughs> what you learn to do when you're like drawing percept <laughs> perceiving is like let's see how do I turn how do I translate this reality and the complexity of it all into like forms which are basically objects but not in the sense of like maybe really objectifying would be like uh like a blow-up doll you know yeah that's not I'm Clarice this is like along the lines of what your work deals with I'm curious what you think yeah, Clarice, totally. I'm... Um, I think some of my work deals with objectification, definitely, but in a way where it's like we kind of objectify ourselves and like see ourselves or just like women in general, right? Or I, I don't like generalizing and stuff, but it just like feels like we're moving towards, um, you know, a society where like we kind of sexualize ourselves in a lot of ways um to gain attention on the internet and stuff like that um and like so I the, gaze, think the gaze is always internalized as well right yeah, yeah. the internet holy shit yeah and it's holy something shit. that's passed along and it's just something that we kind of observe as artists right it's like something that's happening so much that we kind of just like observe it speculate and put that on the canvas and so I feel like we're not privy to that, you know, like. We're... 
Yeah, it's almost like, well, it's so interesting because like I, earlier I was thinking of like how far, you know, we've come with like that kind of thing. And then it's then when you bring up like the Internet and like social media, it's like, meanwhile, it's like worse than ever in some ways, you know, like. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, but I think the people like, I don't know, I don't I'm not trying to like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't want to blame anybody, but the it's like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's a, it's a tough one. I'm interested in, like what you guys have to say cuz I I've, I've never obviously It'd be interesting to be a female and see what it's, you know, how how that kind of thing how we would perceive that yeah, in just, today today, you know. It just feels like we can't be immune to that, you know? Like we can't just um be always like just questioning that I guess because it's so prevalent you know and it's everywhere it's in it's in our media it's yeah it's, yeah it's just everywhere and so I feel like we can't really escape that mm -hmm. it's like when are people going to stop like enjoying looking at bodies you know and like we're not right. going to get like, a, a cold a hard fast because it is it's everywhere I feel like um especially yeah, and like the access now. And with... I'm not saying that, yeah, oh, people shouldn't not enjoy it. Like, I, I identify with that, like, figure drawing and just like human form is kind of beautiful. Um, I think what's worse is that like, advertisements and stuff, you know, and the it, way that it's tied yeah. with, like, oh, this is who you should be, or this yeah. is like a. I would say. Tell you something. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's the major, major biggest contributor is like, advertising and like pornography i mean it's like because it's like okay how do you want to be seen or how how to uh, and then how yeah it's just like and it's like say so prolific like just it's in our face you know it's in it's in people's yeah. faces i think something that painting offers and this has kind of i think been talked about with the female gaze is that it's the female gaze is not necessarily the reversal, so it's not like women looking at men, right. but it's like, and I more of an idea about like embodiment or like feeling or empathy. And mm -hmm. I think painting, it's a slow image, and you're putting so much in there, other than image. Like if you just wanted to capture a body, you'd probably take a, a right. really nice like studio lighting or whatever. But to go to go through the process of painting, you're trying to get your own. Um, hand or touch or like an emotion or some sense of like empathy um that's a really good point into that yeah. representation so I think yeah yeah that's a really good point yeah a photo or a video you know an HD video if you wanted to like just represent <laughs> the you know it's like HD video. you know it's like there's there's yeah. a VR you know what I mean there's just like such ways to just get realism yeah. now if I as I said that though I was like some photographer out there would argue with me and say that they can take nude photos and still have like an oh. art to it or a, a oh, materiality absolutely. or like yeah. Some, yeah so I don't mean to blame the media entirely no, I think no. It's, well it's, when you're I selling like, something though that's yeah. that's different that's like advertising i don't think uh i don't think they get any passes yeah. yeah i think i think it maybe comes back to that point about intent and like how much of yourself you're like trying to put into that yeah yeah, yeah it's definitely something to think about and yeah uh, yeah. yeah yeah voyeurism um which is in painting yeah yeah um speaking of mediums and stuff like that do you do you feel a certain loyalty to the medium of paint um you've tried other media that brings your you back to painting or causes you to choose one over the other like um, what are your thoughts about using different mediums like murals versus canvases, ceramics, animation, and yeah. like shifting styles and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I don't, 
I don't I don't think I feel loyal to paint. I I definitely have been kind of in it the longest. Uh you know, it's something that I've studied or like been doing deeply for a long time. Um and I definitely uh think about pain and color. It's part of how I how I think, but um but I also feel like I want to be open to, you know, using whatever means, whatever means to get to, you know, that the idea or the the feeling. You know, sometimes I'm going for a feeling or or a concept or like right now I'm working on a sculpture and I'm work I'm making it out of plaster. And then I'm gonna do a mosaic on top of it, and I've never done this before, so it's, it's taking longer than I thought. But um, the mosaic on the sculpture. What's yeah. the sculpture? It's a dog chasing its tail. Cool. Can you can you talk about that motif? Like, how did? Yeah, you... the dog. Well, the dog has to do with the gaze. <laughs> I mean, it has to do with all that too. That like, like a a man, a dog, a man as a dog is like, you know, uh, what is man it? A dog. <laughs> it's um, you call a man a dog if they're you know, after women or in some sort yeah. of way, like a dog chasing a cat. Um, that's part of it. It's partly um, from uh, I was inspired by Atomic Dog by George Clinton. It's a really good song. Funkadelic kind of like song. Uh, the dog chasing its tail is mentioned in like the the futurist manifesto. Oh. Like something about like with the irrationality of a dog chasing its tail. It's like a line in that. Um, so irrationality, um, ambition. I think it was like it's becoming like a symbol of that for me. Um, I think it was kind of like I didn't. <laughs> it's kind of a self portrait, like of me in the studio. <laughs> no, uh, that's kind of how it started. But I also think about like domestication. I think about dogs as like a sub like a stand, placeholder for humans and human psychology. And so I think dogs like basically are part human, you know, because they're not, they're domesticated. So it's like they were wolves and now they're dogs. So what's changed is like they had human parents for, and so it's like a, it's like a useful way, I think maybe for me to like, talk about human things through like a symbol or uh, it's just been a symbol that I've been kind of like repeating a few times I've been painting it in different ways and uh, animating it and now I'm making this sculpture and I think that's I, that's something also about my practice is like I've always been kind of all over as far as um wanting to do different things and it's funny because it's very much I'm illustrating it with this it's like I, I'm making a painting an animation a sculpture and I and I like part of me like wants to resist that and just be like paint just paint but um but I don't know something always brings me so that talk about material it's like I always I'm interested in different things and different modes of making mm -hmm. There's like a, it seems like there's a conceptual drive there that's carrying it through the different media. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, a conceptual one and a formal one. Yeah. Where like I keep seeing it in these different iterations where like it's very flat or it's like a symbol, like a, almost like a flag or something. And then like this just almost like human condition flag or something but then I see it as like then I want to see it another way so then I 
but yeah, it's been hanging on a little bit. So you get something different when you bring it to each, like the animation versus the sculpture, kind of like enriches the. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when something, like when when I just when there's something that kind of comes up and then, I, it's like oh well, now that idea is in my mind. It's like now I like gotta make it <laughs> or else you know it's just gonna be uh lingering in there oh. and yeah I think something comes out of it a little a little different different quality mm -hmm. or maybe I'm trying to find out something you know just about it maybe through these different iterations can I find something new or like build on it and not end up as a dog chasing <laughs> I love I love that I identify with that in the studio sometimes <laughs> yeah I totally do sometimes I I, I don't want it to be like well sometimes I see it as like well it's interesting because it could be playful mm -hmm. or it can be like sinister mm -hmm. like it could be like this dog's gonna chase its tail until it starves to death or something you know because because I think that's the delicate balance between, you know, like when, when it comes to like ambition or like desire, you know, it's like it can be this nice thing. Like we can if it's under. You know, uh, it within means like desire is is like natural. It's what we do. It's what we, we, we long for things. And then it can just become so out of hand and it can cause us to go crazy you know so mm -hmm. so I like that kind of way it's like is it playing is it some of them are really angry and some of them are a little more like a little more playful they mostly are kind of scary I think how do you I'm curious um one of the questions was how do you engage uh risk in your practice um risk or fear or like that balance yeah um i don't uh i think risking my future <laughs> <laughs> by being by uh painting and making sculptures instead of like uh, like trying to find something more lucrative financially <laughs> um, maybe that's that's a risk that I feel like is an everyday risk um, I feel like that's enough risk for me but <laughs> but no I mean I think actually painting it has to have like it, it definitely is important a little bit of risk not like real risk but a little bit of push challenging I think it's important to keep it interesting it's like you know try something I try to tell myself like try something that you don't really know how to do or mm -hmm. something like that like I think that's that's important um to just be unsure a little bit about like whether you can execute it uh, I think when it comes too easy it's it can fall flat sometimes 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 they can come easy works can come easy and be good mm -hmm. be okay but I think that when you kind of it it's weird because it's like it's totally anti I don't know it feels weird to like go into something knowing that you're not that you're really unsure it's hard but but then when you do it and you get to the other end you get to the finish line it's like whoa like I didn't see this coming this and and that's kind of a cool reflection of life you know it's like I didn't see myself here a year ago you know mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have that experience of like kind of just arriving and wondering kind of like dang I didn't expect that or <clears throat> totally or surprising yourself you know yeah I think that's really the fun of it I th I think that's a really fun part 
is like mm -hmm. surprising yourself and just yeah I sometimes I think uh I think I sometimes when I try to over plan I think planning is important but when I try to over plan sometimes it kills my I don't know I think I take I get stuck mm -hmm. um but that's different in the murals. In the murals, I try to plan everything. I try to like make it so that I can execute it as fast as possible, you know, which I'm still not very fast, but at least I like have everything prepped. Yeah, so your approach like changes depending on the medium and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. When I was doing, like when, when I just finished a mural, I always want to do something really like, uh impossible to do in a mural in painting like oh like that's what kind of started me I started really looking into like older painting techniques and like I got this really fat book on technical like basically the history of oil and materials and methods and I kind of stopped reading that temporarily because I was just trying to build up some paintings in the last few months for a portfolio but um i'm gonna get back to it and because i felt like those kind of indirect painting techniques were so much different than like the kind of directness of a mural that it was attractive i was like i want to make something really layery and like kind of hard to reproduce mm -hmm. What kind of work do you want to see more in the more of in the world? As far as painting or all art or what do you... any work? Um. Uh. Well, artwork though. Yeah, is that what you're talking? Or or just like humanitarian work? <laughs> like like what? Oh, maybe art. Okay. yeah both artwork. either what kind of artwork do i want to see um oh man that's hard i don't really know what i want to see oh i want to see shoot i'm trying to think of something good i've seen and then like why I guess I just want to see like people. God, that's so hard. I don't really know what I want to see. It's just like when I see, like, yeah, be. You want to be surprised? Yeah, I want to be surprised. That and that means, I guess, less of what's being done now. <laughs> <laughs> Or like, new. <laughs> and more of whatever else there is yeah um, that's the goal right yeah make, make more of whatever else there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I also want to see people um just kind of like uh, just you know I just hope that people are just doing like what's really at the bottom of their soul you know like and not doing what they think is gonna you know make I don't know get them into school or get them into a show um I mean I guess that's one thing the more authenticity and just like authenticity um diversity and uh, I do like seeing, yeah, yeah, I'd say that, like, authenticity, new things. Um, yeah, yeah surprise. Do you have any kind of creative manifesto or motto that guides you? This is our last question. I'm working on that one. <laughs> I mean, what you just said could be, like... <laughs> work from the bottom of your soul you know <laughs> yeah yeah I read a good line uh the other night in the 
was reading David Hickey's Air Guitar, uh, that book. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a collection of essays by the critic Dave Hickey. And he says, he, he's writing a story about a musician, a songwriter, uh, and Hank Williams. He's like pretending he's Hank Williams. And he says something about like, love uh, a good song a good love songs made from your heart's lumber or something like that built from your heart's lumber and i thought that was pretty good yeah i like that that's great mm -hmm. so oscar where can they find you they can find me uh well probably the easiest is instagram at my name oscar pearson underscore um and then my website is a little link you can find the link on my instagram and then you can also find me in grover beach in my backyard if they want to you know whoever they are want to come say hi <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> thank you so much for having this conversation with us this was really great talking with you Oh, thank you, Clarice. Thank you, Molly. It's a pleasure is mine. Um, I hope to talk to you both soon. Ditto. Thank you.